In this video, I will be covering the 7 easiest ways to make gold in Guild Wars 2 for new players. This list is aimed towards players who only have the base game, but these methods are still worth the time and effort for more experienced players. These are not necessarily the best or the fastest ways to make gold in the game, such as doing fractals, strikes and raids. But they're extremely easy, so if you are new and you don't have much experience yet, then these methods will help you progress to a point where you can get into the other, more difficult methods. Some of these methods are shorter things that you can do daily, while others take a while and can only be done from time to time, but all of them are worth it. So, if you want to be rich like me, then stick around until the end of the video where I will give you my personal recommended methods as well as the order in which I do them. Method 1. Daily Login and Daily Completionist There is a set of easy to complete achievements every day that you can do that only takes a bit of time but is very rewarding. You can find them in the Achievements tab under the Daily section, and it always consists of 4 normal PvE achievements, 4 player vs player achievements, and 4 world vs world achievements. You only need to finish 3 of these achievements in total to get the Daily Completionist reward. You can see that I've finished the Daily Completionist achievement here, and as a reward I got 10 achievement points, 3 spirit shots, and 2 gold. Only receiving 2 gold a day doesn't sound like much, but it amounts to roughly 60 gold a month if you do it every day. Doing this every day will also end up giving you a lot of achievement points in total, which also rewards you with gold. However, you can also turn the spirit shards from the reward into gold, which will be covered later in this video. One of the dailies that you should be on the lookout for is the Gathering Daily, as this rewards you not only with the materials that you've gathered, but also some additional ones from the achievements reward. These materials can also be used in the crafting as well as the selling materials and gear method. Also keep an eye open for the Mystic Forger daily achievement. All you have to do is use the Mystic Forge and you will be rewarded with a Mystic Coin which sells for quite a lot on the trading post. You can also do the PvP as well as the World vs World daily achievements if you have the time, as they give you potions that further the progress of your current reward track within that game mode, leading to more gear and materials as well as achievements which again leads to more gold in the future. If you don't have the time to do the daily achievements, then you should try to at least log in once a day, even if it is just to the character select screen. This will progress your login rewards, which gives you a lot of mystic coins, a lot of laurels and many other useful items, including a chest of loyalty from which you can choose either ascended crafting materials, legendary crafting materials, laurels or tomes of knowledge. I usually select the 20 laurels as I find this to be the most profitable out of all of these options. Keep watching if you would like to find out how to make gold with your spirit shards, laurels and other in-game currencies. Method 2. Daily Gathering There is a list of gathering spots all over the map that you can go to and farm tons of materials. I will not be getting into details here, but if you are interested in this, then check the GW2 Efficiency website, which I will link in the description. Home Instance Gathering is another way of obtaining a lot of gathering materials in a short amount of time and with very little effort. All you have to do is go to one of the five major cities, these are Divinity's Ridge, The Grove, Ratasum, Hulbrak, and the Black Citadel. And then ask people in the map chat if you can go and gather their home instances. If you plan on doing this daily, then I recommend asking people when they normally do it and joining them at that time so that they don't have to go out of their way and wait for you to finish. You can also offer them a small cut of your profit as a reward for helping you. I recommend doing this in Rotasum as I find this the quickest map out of the five to do it in. Using a class that provides quickness and swiftness also helps speed things up a bit. You can also invest in permanent harvesting tools down the line, as well as glyphs that you can put into them to make things a bit easier and more rewarding. 
both of these cost a lot, but in my opinion, pay for themselves. You can also improve your own home instance in many ways, including using Black Lion statuettes. Glyphs can be found within Black Lion chests as well as on the trading post, but some of these are very expensive and are barely worth the price, so do your own research before deciding which of these to buy. Permanent harvesting tools are bought on the gem store, but you can also obtain them using black line statuettes. However, this option isn't always available. Some of the permanent harvesting tools come with glyphs already installed, and you can check the wiki to learn more about this. You can also go to your guild hall once a day and gather the material synthesizers there. All you have to do is go to the guild tab by pressing G and click on the guild hall button. If you're not in a guild, then you can go to any of the major cities mentioned before or Lion's Arch and ask people in the map chat if any guilds are looking for members. If you are in two or more separate guilds and your guilds have different guild halls, then you can go to each by swapping guilds and gather the materials from them, as long as the synthesizers are at different levels. Guild Hall and Home Instance Gathering also counts towards the daily gathering achievement mentioned before if the map you are in happens to fall into the covered area of the daily achievement. Method 3. Selling Crafting Materials and Gear You receive a lot of crafting materials and gear as you play the game. Some drop from enemies that you kill while others are rewarded from completing events. Any looted gear that is of no use to you should be salvaged for materials, which will end up in your material storage. However, you should always check the price of items on the trading post before salvaging by right-clicking on the item and then clicking on Sell a Trading Post. Any rare gear that sells for more than 20 silver and exotic gear that sells for more than 40 silver should be sold directly on the trading post, and the rest you can just salvage. These materials that you loot or are salvaged from gear can be quite valuable, so every now and then I like to go to my material storage and then I go through all of the materials that I won't be needing soon and sell them on the trading post. This is an easy way to make a ton of gold overnight, but you need to play a lot to stack up your material storage. You also get masterwork unidentified gear. These are the blue and green ones. These bags should be opened and the items from them should be sold or salvaged. You can also sell these bags directly if you're lazy or if you don't have the inventory space to open them. It's important though that you don't salvage these bags but open them and salvage the gear that's on the inside. When selling anything on the trading post, whether it's gear, materials, food or any other items in the game, it's very important to always check the difference between the current buyers and the current sellers. If there is only a tiny difference with many listings, then you can pretty much sell these items directly. But if there is a big gap between the two, then you should list your items and wait for someone to buy them. Method 4. Map Meta Events and World Bosses Map meta events are an easy way to get a ton of gear very quickly. The more profitable ones are only open to players with the expansions and these include Dragonfall, Drizzlewood Coast, Istan, and the daily Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire map meta events. If you don't have access to these maps, then you should focus on doing the Silver Wastes and World Bosses. The Silver Wastes Reba is the most common method used for farming the Silver Wastes, and squads running this method will always advertise in the Looking for Group tool. The method consists of the squad completing events in a circle on the map and furthering the progress bar that way instead of having four different groups camp out at each of the four different forts on the map. This way you get to do a lot more events and get a lot more loot as opposed to standing around and waiting for the events to start. Once the progress bar is filled, the event, The Bridge, will start, which leads into the map meta event, during which you will kill the Vinewrath. Once the Vinewrath is killed, you will be granted with the Hero of the Wastes, as well as the Perseverance buffs, both of which give you a ton of magic find. These buffs will stay on you as long as you remain in the current instance of the map. 
but if you leave the map or if you go to a different instance of the Silver Wastes, then these buffs will disappear. The map takes 20 minutes to restart, at which point the commander will lead the squad to first go and kill 5 champion enemies, and then you will go across the map and farm buried chests, which also contain a ton of loot. The Silver Wastes is great if you have a lot of time to play, because once the reset timer is done, the process starts all over again, meaning that the farming never ends. Using classes with a lot of swiftness and mobility skills helps you to keep up with the squad and be part of more of the events. If you do the Reba method correctly, then you will end up receiving hundreds of loot bags per hour. World Bosses Defeating world bosses rewards you with around 1 gold for each kill. They have a higher chance of dropping precursor weapons, which are used in legendary weapon crafting, but also sell for a lot of gold. And you actually get quite a bit of loot from doing these events as well, as some of these bosses spawn enemies that drop loot. Hardcore world bosses, such as the Quattle the Sunless and Triple Trouble, both reward you with around 4 gold, while the Kaka Queen only rewards you with about 1 gold, but she dies very quickly. Just like with the Silver Wastes, it's quite easy to find a squad running world bosses in the Looking for Group tool. Method 5. Dungeons. Completing an explorable dungeon path rewards you with 20 tales of dungeon delving, 26 silver, 70% of your character's current level, a piece of rare unidentified gear, and some karma. On top of this, an additional bonus chest is granted once a day for the first time that you complete each dungeon path. This bonus chest contains an extra 80 tales of dungeon delving as well as some extra coins which differ per dungeon. The Ascalonian Catacombs gives you an extra 50 silver per path, while the Ruined City of Ara gives you an extra 50 silver to 1 gold and 5 silver depending on the path. The rest of the dungeons each give you an extra 35 silver. Additionally, completing the Dungeon Frequenter achievement by completing 8 different dungeon paths will reward you with another 5 gold, as well as a chest of Dungeoneering which contains 150 Tales of Dungeon Delphine. The Dungeon Frequenter achievement repeats, meaning that you can complete it over and over to get this extra reward. You can also use this achievement to check which of the paths you've done and which you still need to do to complete the achievement. The story mode of each dungeon also rewards you with some silver and tales of dungeon delving, but they're generally not worth the time or effort. However, you should consider doing the story of each dungeon at least once, so that you can open the explorable paths of each dungeon. If doing dungeons daily is something you're considering, then you should do these 8 paths. Ascalonian Catacombs, paths 1, 2 and 3. Twilight Arbor, paths forward and up. Sorrow's Embrace, paths 1 and 3. And the Citadel of Flame, path 1. These paths are generally easier and quicker to do than the rest, and if you do each of them every day, then you will also get the extra reward from the Dungeon Frequenter achievement once a day. As you get more Tales of Dungeon Delphine, you can start using these to buy exotic gear from the Dungeon Armor and Weapons vendor in Lion's Arch. You can also convert these into gold by buying gear and then salvaging them for insignias, inscriptions and blobs of ectoplasm all of which can be sold on the trading post for a bit of extra gold. Once you've obtained good gear and you're more experienced in dungeons, I recommend forming or joining a party that runs them daily, as you can speedrun most paths in about 10 minutes per path and you average out at around 25 gold for only an hour of your time. Method 6. Currency Conversion Along with gold and gems, there are a number of other currencies which you will be accumulating as you play the game. In this video, I will be covering Dungeon Delphine, Spirit Shards, Karma, Badges of Honor, Laurels, Guild Commendations and Claim Tickets. But there are a lot of other currencies which I will be covering in a different video. James. 
gems are received from completing achievements and these can be directly converted into gold via the currency exchange tab on the Black Lion Trading Company menu. The conversion rate changes drastically, so there's never a set amount of gold that you can get per gem. But luckily, there is a graph on GW2 efficiency, which you can check out via the link in the description. Gems are also bought from ArenaNet through the game or from external sources if you urgently need gold and you don't mind spending actual money on the game. Personally though, I never convert gems into gold as I feel that there are a ton of cool skins and useful account upgrades that can only be bought on the gem store. Tales of Dungeon Delphine I've already covered this earlier in the video, so if you skip that, then check the timestamps in the video description and go back to that part of the video. Spirit Shards Spirit Shards are obtained when you level up after reaching level 80 with your character. You can also use Terms of Knowledge on a character at level 80 to get more Spirit Shards. Spirit Shards can be used to buy items from Iani, who is next to the Mystic Forge and Lion's Arch. These items can be used in the Mystic Forge to create other items that sell for a lot of gold, such as named exotic weapons, mystic weapons, and pendants. All of these items require other items in the recipe and some might cost a lot to acquire, so be sure to check the items that you want to make and do some research on what goes into them. Spirit Shards can also be used to upgrade material tiers. This is very easy to do and it doesn't cost a lot to get started, although it can take a long time to make a lot of gold this way. The recipe for this is simple. If you need tier 6 materials, such as vials of powerful blood, all you will need is one of the tier 6 item, 50 of that item's previous tier, so in this case it will be vials of potent blood, 5 piles of crystalline dust, and 5 philosopher's stones, which are bought using your spirit shards. This will output between 4 and 12 vials of powerful blood, meaning that each time you do this, you'll get an average of 7 vials of powerful blood. However, each different material type, as well as that type's tier, have their own output amount, so be sure to do your own research before doing this to see what's worth it and what isn't. You can use this method for upgrading common crafting materials, refined common crafting materials, fine crafting materials, and rare crafting materials. Each of these categories have their own recipes, but they always require at least one item purchased with spirit shards. Because the prices of items and materials on the trading post constantly changes, the most profitable recipe for this method will never be the same. You should use GW2 Efficiency, which is linked in the video description, to check the most valuable recipes as well as which items are needed for each different method. I personally use spirit shards to get cool weapon skins that I like or to obtain tier 6 materials when creating legendary items. Karma I've already made a very detailed video on how to convert karma into gold, so I won't be getting into it in this video, but be sure to check that out if you want to learn more about this. Badges of Honor Badges of Honor is a currency acquired by playing World vs World and it can be used to obtain gear and items from vendors within World vs World. Some of these items can be sold on the trading post for a profit, however, the profit margin is very small and just like with upgrading material tiers, it can take extremely long to get a lot of gold this way. You can use GW2 efficiency to check which of these items are the most profitable. I normally use Badges of Honor to buy level 80 exotic gear, like armor and weapons, whenever I want to try new builds on some of my new characters. If you play a lot of World vs World and you have a ton of these, then this might be a good method for you to get exotic gear for some of your other characters. You can also use Badges of Honor to buy cultural armor, which can help you get a ton of achievement points from the Fashion tab under General Achievements. Laurels. Laurels are obtained as a login reward as I mentioned earlier. You get 35 laurels every 28 days if you log in every day, plus an additional 20 if you choose the laurel option from the chest of loyalty reward. Laurels can be used to buy a number of items including ascended items, infusions, recipes, living world season 1 rewards 
and many more. The items we'll be looking at today are the crafting bags and specifically the heavy crafting bags. These bags have a chance of giving you 3 of any of the tier 6 materials, giving you a profit per laurel of currently around 38 silver. This means that for every 100 laurels you can make around 38 gold. The heavy crafting bag is always competing with the light and medium crafting bags to be the most profitable, so use GW2 efficiency before converting laurels into gold to check which of these bags are the most profitable. I generally use this method to get tier 6 materials when I work on legendary items, but it can also be helpful when converting spirit shards into gold or crafting items to sell. Guild Commendations You can earn guild commendations by completing guild missions. I've already discussed how to become a part of a guild if you aren't in one already. Use the timestamps to go to the daily gathering section of this video if you missed that. You can earn between 12 and 15 guild commendations per week and, just like with the other currencies, they can be used to purchase gear and items, some of which can be sold on the trading post for a profit. The current most profitable item is the Bolt of Embroidered Silk, which gives you a profit per commendation of around 40 to 41 silver. However, your guild needs to have unlocked the Guild Trader for you to be able to buy this. If you can't access this item, then the 4 times Guild Arrow Card Blueprint bought from the Guild Commendation Trader will be your best bet, giving you a profit of around 26 to 27 silver per commendation. It's worth mentioning that you can also use Guild Commendations to buy exotic weapons with unique skins as well as banners such as the Guild Heroes banner which gives you a lot of boosts such as increased magic find. Black Lion Claim Tickets Claim tickets have a small chance of dropping from Black Lion chests but can also be bought for 10 Claim Ticket scraps or 50 Black Lion statuettes, both of which have a higher chance of dropping from Black Lion chests. You can exchange them for weapon skins at the Black Lion Weapon Specialist and these skins can be sold on the trading post. However, the skins that you can buy changes roughly every 4 weeks and every time a new set of skins are introduced, the old ones move down a tab, making them more expensive with every change. This means that the best skin to buy with your claim tickets will constantly be changing and you can check GW2 efficiency via the link in the description to see which skins to buy. At the time of creating this video, the most profitable skin is the Snow Garden Hammer skin, which has a profit per ticket of around 26 gold. Some of these skins are more valuable than others, so it's worth checking GW2 efficiency before spending your tickets. Method 7. Crafting Certain craftable items can sell for a lot of money on the trading post. These include time-gated items, materials, foods, unidentified dyes, rare and exotic gear, and many more. In this video, we will only be looking at the time-gated items, however, I will be going into detail on how to make gold from crafting in a future video, so if you want to see that, then be sure to subscribe to my channel. Time-gated items are rare because they can only be created once per day per account. Most of these are used in ascended crafting, making them high in demand, but because there is such a low supply for these, they easily become scarce, which makes them very profitable. The items used in Ascended Crafting include Bolt of the Mask, Daldrimor Steel Ingot, Elonian Leather Square, Spiritwood Plank, Carbonized Mithrillium Ingot, Square of Fabian Silk, Blended Leather Sheet, and Composite Wood Board. Other profitable time-gated items include Ley Line Infused Tool, Clay Pot, Grow Lamp, Heat Stone, Plate of Meaty Plant Food, and Plate of Piquant Plant Food. The prices of these items change a lot, so I recommend crafting a few of these every day and letting them stack up while keeping an eye on the price so that you can sell them when they're most profitable. My daily recommended routine. Please keep in mind that this daily routine is for new players who are just starting out and only have the base game. Once you're more experienced in the game and you have better gear as well as access to some of the expansions, then this routine will change. If you don't have much time to play, then you should log in every day. 
even if it is just to the character select screen. This will progress your daily login reward calendar for extremely little effort. Along with logging in, if you have the time, you should do the daily completionist achievements. Either the three most profitable PvE ones, such as the daily gathering, and if it's available, the Mystic Forger daily achievements. Or you can do the PvP or World vs. World daily achievements for the extra potions that further along your reward track. Next, you should gather your guild hall, as well as try to gather a full home instance. The dailies plus the gathering can be done in roughly 30 minutes depending on which of the dailies are available. If you have more time to play, then you should focus on doing dungeons and some map meta farming or doing world bosses. Once you've completed the 8 recommended dungeon paths I mentioned earlier in the video and you've spent some time doing events, you should look at crafting the time-gated items from the crafting section of this video. Remember to check your collectibles every now and then to sell materials that you don't want or won't need. I hope that you enjoyed my list of the easiest methods of making gold in Guild Wars 2. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. This tells YouTube that you enjoyed the video and will make it more likely to be recommended to other players. You can also share the video with your friends who are just starting out or post it in your guild's discord if you feel that some of the players can benefit from this information. I will be making a lot more similar guides to this one in the near future, including going into detail on most of the methods mentioned earlier, so be sure to let me know which parts of the videos you enjoyed and which you didn't. Also let me know of any easy or quick methods that you feel should have been included and I might feature them in a future video.